go straight to the conversations between Misty and Lottie because I feel like the way Misty talks mm. to Lottie, like Lottie's had some people push back, but not with that same kind of authority and force. Mm. What was it like finding the right tone for that conversation with Samantha and the right way for Lottie to take hearing that type of thing? Yeah, it was an interesting scene because I'm still covered in prosthetics. So there's like the physicality that also comes with it, which brings like a, a weakness and puts her already at below Misty kind of that she can't physically fight back or and I don't think she's 100% in her right mind either she was having fevers the night before but yeah I mean Samantha's like magnificent in the way that she plays Misty she's so uh, good. I I mean everyone I every character I don't think anyone else could play them as well as all our cast do but yeah Misty I mean uh Sam just I has do that like all the yeah. time. I, I am think shocked everyone I does. have not called you Lottie at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only time I did it at the junket where was with uh, was with Tawny, where I meant to say Thais and I might have said Tawny or the opposite. And I'm like, at least it only happened once. It <laughs> happens on set all the time. They're like, Connie, Lottie. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, she has this real strength that I just think comes from Misty being so underestimated um she knows her own power too which is interesting that she uses it in such a way she she holds on to it as a secret almost Mm -hmm. um but yeah the the dynamic with misty and lottie i think is something that's probably going to be a bit more played out later oh, on. <laughs> I am so curious about yeah. that. She's another one that was difficult to come up with questions mm-hmm. for because on the surface she might be doing one thing, but I know deep down the intentions are somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the next one of the next scenes, at least after the attic conversation, it's when mm-hmm. like Lottie admits to the group that she never wanted to be a leader, and she basically convinces them that the wilderness wants someone else to be the leader. Mm. In that moment when you're playing a scene like that. How much do you think Lottie believes that that truly is the case, that the wilderness said it is time for another leader and that leader needs to be Natalie versus her having heard what Misty just said and knowing the influence of her voice and maybe trying to manipulate the group by convincing them that they need to take the attention away from her voice and her power as leader? Interesting. Yeah, I always had it in the back of my mind as a slight little secret that... Lottie was done being leader and kind of just wanted to pass it off to someone else. Um, And a way of doing that was saying that it is the wilderness. But I do think with Lottie, it's always two ideas at the same time. It's half and half. Like, I think it's half that and then half. She does think the wilderness maybe chose her. Um, yeah. It's always a little of both. No, I get it. I get it. All right. I'm moving on to the scene with uh, Juliet on the plane mm. now. I'm really I'm really curious about how you play a scene like that because I feel like whenever we see a character have, you know, a dream or a vision, the other people that they see might be more so representations of, of like, their projections and how they envision them. So when you're playing Lottie in that particular scene, how much is, like, your true Lottie versus what Natalie might be seeing at the moment? Hmm, that's a really good question. I think there is a slight shift, but I don't know if I'm consciously thinking of that. Um, but she is a softer, like, the best version of Lottie that she could be talking to Juliet. Oh, that's curious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so my follow-up to that would be one of her lines is, Natalie, it's not evil, just hungry like us, just let it in. So. When you mm. deliver a line like that, even if it's something that winds up changing down mm. the line, do you have to have, I guess, any sort of understanding in what her actually doing that would do to her? Like what letting it in would feel like if if that's rest or if there's something more sinister involved? Yeah, I don't know. I thought about this line a lot and I had a bit of trouble with it when we were doing the scene because I was like, I don't know what I'm saying and no one's going to tell me what the meaning behind it is. Um, But what was the second half of that question? I think it was uh, just if you need to know, if you need mm -hmm. to know the results of Natalie taking her up on that advice by doing that. No, I I think with this show, you can't always 
try to figure out what the result is, and and I kind of just go by what the feeling is in that moment. What like that question might bring up in me, more so than trying to figure it out. Because if you try to figure it out, you're going to throw yourself too far left or right, mm-hmm. and then you're going to have to backpedal if you were wrong. So this is uh, like a little more theory territory again, but the last line of, of season one for her, shed the blood, my beautiful friends, and let the darkness set us free. What do you think she meant by that in season one, and how might she reinterpret or redefine that statement at the end of season two? I think... I think they're completely flipped now. For season one, it was coming from a a place where I think they're in complete chaos and, and God <laughs> <laughs> I think now that that version of that line is a lot darker and maybe for all of them, but m- maybe it, it's directed at the people around her, less so than her being involved. I think the first time she said that line included her. Maybe the second time she's uh, in the second half of it is she doesn't count herself as part of that anymore. Okay, I don't uh, know. I like, <laughs> no, I, I like that thread. That's that is truly how I kind of interpreted mm. it too. I'll ask you two two more questions before we wind this down, kind of jumping off that point a little. At the end of season two, what do you think Lottie thinks her greatest strength is and her greatest weakness is? Who? Oh. At the end of season two, I'm not sure if Lottie thinks she has a great, like, a, a greatest skill. Um, I think she feels that she's done damage not intentionally um and then her biggest downfall probably also that oh god my heart for her i know in the finale she didn't need it i think she's just like has no idea where she stands like in the last shot where it's um all of them standing watching the thing you i you just see her laughing i don't think she really knows what to do and she's like burn like <laughs> oh, wow <laughs> sorry <gasps> that is so dark yeah but I love it I love I, it yeah have all, you, have your, all your interviews with us just been like dark pretty, as hell oh pretty much I feel like I feel like also I was especially taken aback by that with with Liv because Van starts with with so much mm-hmm. light in her and you could and it's true what they say in the show actually happens so over the course of it, you see it dimming and dimming and dimming mm-hmm. and it's it's heartbreaking to watch yeah. something like that happen all right. Yeah, this might be a more positive question to finish on okay, then. I'll try. Of all of the characters that are left in the 90s timeline, who do you think Lottie would have the most to gain from if she spent more time with that person in season three? Shona or Natalie. Okay. For different reasons. Shona, I think, would give her a sense of strength and I think she would find comfort in her Shauna is a character that doesn't speak often but when she does she has something important to say she's a watcher and I think I think Lottie appreciates that um, and then Natalie I think Lottie admires how truly herself she is um So life lesson-wise, I think those two. But I also feel like, I don't know, I feel a weird tie between the three of them. I don't know what that means. Okay. Uh, Maybe in season three something will happen. I don't know. That just seems like something that they're dancing around with each other. (laughs) 